The big deal in this work is you can change your being, and this work aims at changing your being. Why? Why change our being? How can we change our being? Everybody promises change. All the programs promise change. All the books promise change. All the religions promise change. Everything promises change, and nobody delivers except the people we shop. You know, they may give you the correct change if they have an automated change machine that just cranks it out into the little cup. You know, then you get your change. Otherwise, we don't change much. We're pretty much the people we've been our whole lives. Chief feature will continually attract typical events, people, situations, health problems, whatever is typical for your life. You know, there are some things that are typical for your life that are not typical for other people's lives. For, for me, for a long time in my life, accidents were typical. Injuries were typical. In other words, self-abuse was typical. It was something that came around again and again and again. I remember when I was in high school, I broke one foot and I went around on crutches for eight weeks or however long it is, and cast and crutches. Then I got the cast off and I broke the other foot. And then I broke one hand and then I broke the other hand. And it was like that for me. Injuries were typical. So chief feature will constantly, continually attract typical events. Typical people. Isn't it interesting that we always get typical people in our lives? There are some people who always have to have a drunk in their lives. They have to have an alcoholic. If they don't have an alcoholic in their lives, they need to go out and find one. And it doesn't have to be a, a drinking, a practicing alcoholic. It can be a dry alcoholic, someone who just has alcoholic behavior but doesn't actually drink. So they may be abstaining from alcohol, but they still have the same behavior. They haven't changed their behavior. People find themselves in dramatic situations or in boring situations, whatever, but they're typical. They, they occur again and again and again. And this chief feature continually attracts these things to us. Our level of being is like a train yard. I grew up in the city and, and there were trains because in a city you, a train yard and the trains come and they leave coal or they leave lumber or they leave whatever they pick up this and they take it out but a city needs to be fed and a big city needs to be fed in a big way and trains used to be the main way of feeding a city back in the old days 60 years ago now it's more trucking but a level of being is like a train yard with different sets of tracks. But in this train yard, there are overpasses and trellises. Also in the city, there were trains, and they had uh, trains that traveled above the, the streets. They were called L's, or they were called, they had different names for them in different cities. Uh, they would travel overhead. Level of being is like that. There are higher and lower levels of being. Or Maurice Nicole explained it in another way. He said it's like parallel telegraph wires or phone wires. You look outside at the wires and you can see that they're parallel. They run along together, but they're higher and lower. He said level of being is like that. And he wanted to give us a mental image so that we could start to understand levels of being because this is something we don't easily understand and the reason we don't easily understand it is because why do you suppose that is well some of you already know because you heard me talk about this morning we can't see the parallel levels of being because we're blinded and what blinds us pride and, pride and vanity blind us it's the first thing that these two great monsters do that walk before us ordering everything and fixing everything they blind us so that they become our guide dogs, as it were. And they lead us in life. And they order everything in advance. So that by the time we get there, the only thing we have to rely on, on what is there, is what pride and vanity tell us. Which means we're effectively blinded to anything that's actually there. We can't see or experience life or take in impressions, fresh, new. Because pride and vanity have arranged everything. So that all the impressions that we take in are the same old impressions, typical, according to our level of being. If we could raise our level of being, even by a little bit of work on ourselves, we might get to the next parallel track or wire or level of being above the one that we're currently on. This is our hope. This is what this work is about, to raise our level 
to just the next parallel track or wire or level of being above our present one. And thereby, if you're on a track, if you're on a train track, you're going where that train track is going. That train track always goes to this station and then to that station and then to that station and then to that station. And then if it's switched, it always goes to that station and that station and that station. That's it. In order to change that, you've got to get on a different track. That's what this work is about. There is no other way to have a different life. You have to get on a different track. That's what we're talking about. That's our way of hopefully understanding level of being. Because on that track, you're going to go through that town. But if we could raise our level of being, get on a different highway, a different track, a different line, then we could avoid the unpleasantness that is unavoidable, that's that's going to come if we stay on this track. You must see that if you stay on the track you're on now, there are certain unpleasant things that are going to come your way. Your children are going to behave in this way or that way towards you, and that's going to be unpleasant. Your husband or wife is going to behave towards you in this way or that way, and that's going to be unpleasant. Your this or that's going to happen in your job. This or that's going to happen here or there. I was talking to somebody the other day on the phone, and they're telling me about all their health problems, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, and just everything just out of whack, totally out of whack. And he had no idea whatsoever that any of this was the track he was on. None of it. All he knew is he liked to eat this, he loved to eat that, and he was going to eat what he wanted to eat because life's short and he may as well just have what you want. But he had no idea that he was making life shorter and shorter all the time. But not only was he making life shorter, the quality of life was constantly going down like a slow leak. And it wasn't anything you saw. It just slowly dropped and so that you became used to it, like taking a frog, a live frog, and putting it in a pot of water and then heating the water. And the frog just stays in the water until it boils because the change is so gradual. And the same thing happens with us. We're on the track. This is the track we're on. This is where we're going. All the unpleasantness that we're going to experience, well, we're going to experience it. But we don't really believe we're going to experience it because we imagine that somehow it's going to be different. We'll talk about the great illusions that keep us where we are some other time. But right now, we'll finish up with this business of avoiding the unpleasantness down the line. Always behaving typically ensures we'll always travel the same track, the lowest level, the mechanical level. We always behave as we typically behave. And how is that? Well, ask someone who lives with you. People who do this, who typically behave the same way, typically over and over again, they ensure that they'll never transform their lives. So life will meet them at exactly, in exactly the same way, the same things, the same situations, the same misunderstandings, the same difficulties, the same kinds of people, over and over again. Just like a train or a bus line has the same stops and the same stations and goes through the same towns and the same weather patterns and the same and the same and the same over and over again in a cycle. You may deduce your level of being by noticing what always happens to you. I deduced my level of being by noticing what always happens to me. I always got into accidents. I was always hurting myself. I finally realized, you know, this is about me. I'm always hurting myself. What does that mean? I always hurt myself. Maybe I don't like me. Maybe I don't like me and I think that I need to be punished for being who I am. And so I'm spending my life punishing me. This is an unpleasant realization about yourself. If you ever have this kind of realization about yourself, it can be very unpleasant. It's like, well, gee, that, that's not very smart. Well, no, add that to the list now of things I need to punish myself about. <laughs> I'm also not very <laughs> smart now. You see, and it's just, that's just it. That whole level of being, that whole train track always goes to those towns. Your life is your being. You can notice what happens to you and sometimes deduce your level of being. Mostly not because we're blinded by pride and vanity. So we justify ourselves. Your being is what you are. All that happens to you in life is the result of your level of being. If you're satisfied with your life, there's no need to change your level of being. Most people are satisfied with their lives. They don't think they need to change. Isn't that true? I mean, most people are satisfied with their lives. They don't really think that they need to change. We can include ourselves in this. It's interesting that people who say that they're satisfied also say, well, I really dislike that person. Or, well, you know, I didn't have the same kind of 
an upbringing, the same kind of chance other people had. You know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. You know, I didn't get a chance to get a good education like some people. Or they say things like, um, you know, gee, I'm worried about this person or that person. Or they say things like, well, I'm really not appreciated. I could do, I'm really not paid what I'm worth. I could do, I, I'm really worth a lot more. And uh, they don't appreciate me at work. But these are the same people who are satisfied with their lives. Not seeing that all of those things are indicators of their dissatisfaction. There we are. People don't see the connection between their being and their lives because we don't think what happens to us in life has anything to do with our level of being. It doesn't have anything to do with our level of being. You can't show me. Can show me a level of being. You see, it's different if I can show you a baseball that is hit by a bat and goes through a window and breaks the window. Okay, I can see that. I believe that. I believe that that baseball broke the window. But am I going to make the baseball pay for it? No, I'm looking for the kid who hit it and knocked it through my window. And then who am I going to talk to? I'm going to talk to his father about it because I want somebody to pay for the broken window. Because it wasn't my fault. My level of being didn't attract that broken window. That kid did it. And his father's responsible for what he did. I know you get the logic in that. And that's what's scary. The fact that you get the logic in that is terrifying because there's no logic in that. It's simply a linear line of blaming, blame shifting. So instead of saying, I'm responsible, it's my level of being attracted to baseball through the window, we say, he did it to me. It's his fault. He was irresponsible. He wasn't paying attention. Okay. People don't see the connection between their level of being and their lives because we don't think that our level of being has anything to do with what happens to us in life. We think what happens to us in life is other people's fault. It's what other people did. It's what this or that, but it's not us. So we're stuck. Your level of being attracts all this and keeps you constantly under its influence. Ospensky said, can you see your level of being at all yet? Can you see where you stand in the world of being yet? And see, the thing is, is, is that mostly we can't. But let's take a look at where we stand in the world of being. We stand above the animal kingdom, mostly. We stand above dogs and cats and, and hamsters and you know rodents and lizards and things like that and birds. We're smarter than them. We can use tools better than they can. We can make things better than they can. We can drive cars better than they can. So we stand above them. We are able to be more, so we stand above them. But compared with God, we have a very low level of being. We're not omniscient. We're not omnipresent. We're not omnipotent. We can't make ourselves well. We can't raise ourselves from the dead. We have a low level of being compared to God, but a high level of being compared to insects and birds and, and the lower animals. So we get an idea of where we are, where we stand in the world of being. Everything is at a certain level of being in this vast scheme reaching up to the being of God. What does that mean? Well, that's your problem. You figure that out. For me, I know what it means. But it doesn't matter what I know. What does that do for you? Nothing. Unless you say, well, I, I, whatever you know, that's what I want to know. Well, then find out. Well, how did you find out? Well, I found out by the way people find out. And that's how we all have to find out. Or we accept somebody else's belief system. It becomes our belief system, and it's worthless. It's not a level of being at all. It's simply a belief system. It's like a patch on a tire. It's like the stickers that kids put on their bicycles. That's all it is. It's just something that's stuck on to the outside of us. It's not something that changed anything inside of us. It's not an, a life-altering thing. It's a patch. It's a sticker. So how can we change our level of being? How can we stop putting patches on and actually change our level of being? This whole work is about giving us methods to change it. Well, what do we do with the methods to change it? Well, we complain about them. Oh, they're giving me another task. Like I didn't have enough to do. You're the one who said you wanted to change your level of being. Instead of kissing my feet for giving you a task that would help you to change your level of being, you criticize me for giving you another task that would help you to do what you say you want to do, which of course was a lie. You don't really want to do that at all because you don't think your level of being needs to change. You think my level of being needs to change and I need to stop giving you so many tasks and then you'll be happy. See why I think you're insane? Because you are. That's insane. The very thing that we know we need, we push away from us 
with extreme prejudice. Non-identifying starts with not identifying with yourself. If you're full of yourself, the Sermon on the Mount would say, then you're rich in spirit. Well, uh, rich in spirit, that sounds like a good thing. Rich in spirit, who'd want to be poor in spirit? I want to be rich in spirit. Well, great, being rich in spirit in the Bible language, in esoteric language, means you're full of yourself. You're full of pride and vanity. You're full of identifying with yourself. How wonderful you are. How important you are. How you are the center of everything. How everything needs to bow down to you. How everything needs to take care of you. How everything needs to be about you. We're rich in spirit. Well, you're richer in spirit than I am. Good for you. Good one. That'll get you a long way toward changing your level of being. Very good, very good. I was, I'm always amazed by that. Yes, that's a good one. So we effectively, not only do we effectively keep ourselves where we are, we get the screw gun out and screw ourselves into where we are so that we can never move. That's so intelligent. Flexibility is a sign of intelligence, not the ability to screw ourselves into the same place and always be the same. Always stay on the same track, always go to the same place over and over and over again. People take great pride in that. On Thursday, I always eat at this place at this time, and this is my table, and this is my waitress, and this is what I have to eat. Oh, that's wonderful. We call that being crystallized out. So stuck that only death is going to change anything. If he's not here on Thursday at this time and having this, he's dead or in the hospital. You know people like that? Just don't be one. <laughs> You can know people like that, but don't be one. Begin to observe yourself, and you'll become poor in spirit. You won't identify with yourself so much. Tough observing yourself. Uncritically, it's just something I'm observing. This is the only way to become poor in spirit, which is something that we want if we're looking for what the Sermon on the Mount promises. Well, what is the Sermon on the Mount really promising? What did it say? Blessed are the poor in spirit. So what does blessed mean? Blessed means, blessed means, what does, it, what does blessed mean? Well, blessed means that someday we're really going to get it. Someday it's really, we're going to die and go to heaven. It's really going to be good. We're going to get it. It's really going to be good. But blessed means that to most people. Now, you may, you may be smarter than the average bear. You may know that that's not what blessed means. Good for you. What does blessed mean? Blessed means bliss. It means happiness. That's what it means. It means those who are poor in spirit, those who don't identify with themselves, are happy. They hang out in a neighborhood of bliss. They're, they're happy. Why? Because they're not identified with the nut job machine that life has made. They don't think that they are it. They don't have to defend it. They don't have to protect it. They don't have to make sure everybody sees it in this light and make sure nobody sees it without its makeup on and nobody sees it without its hair combed and nobody sees its skirt up or its pants down or whatever. You see the incredible burden that is? People without that are happy or happier and they're blissed out. This is what the Sermon on the Mount is talking about. Look, if you want to be blissed out, if you want to be happy, be meek. Be poor in spirit. What does meek mean? Meek. You know, that's another one, meek. Okay, we got poor in spirit. Don't identify yourself, you'll be poor in spirit. The result is, what for you is bliss. The relief and happiness that comes from no longer having to keep up the idea of yourself with which you were identified. All these phrases, formulations that I drone on about are real instructions to change the level of your being. Oh, but I heard that before. He said the same thing last week. Good. It won't seem so the same thing last week to you if you'll do it this week. Well, I did it last week. Fine. Do it this week. Well, that's stupid. No, that's not stupid. You have to do it and 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 do it forever. It's called change, changing your level of being so that you no longer be who you were. You be who you are going to be. You can get the source of inner happiness by applying the ideas of this work on yourself. Meek simply means this. You go back to the original Greek translations that we have. Meek means not resentful. What a different concept. Not resentful? Right. Not resentful. Well, let's just soak in that for a couple of minutes. Meek means not, be Meek means not resentful? Wow. 
I thought meek meant timid. I thought meek meant milk toast. I thought meek meant wishy washy. I thought meek meant step on you on my way to where I'm going. You're meek. Get out of my way. I don't have time for you. You don't know what you want. Meek meant weak. Then I remember meek meant teachable. Someone who was teachable. But meek means not resentful. I like that. Blessed are those who are not resentful. You see the bliss, the happiness there? Blessed are those, blissful are those, happy are those who are not resentful. Wow. I'm sure a lot of unhappy people on this planet because we're resentful about everything. Did you see what he did? The nerve. I, some people are so asleep. Some people are so stupid. Some people are so ignorant. Some people are so caught up with themselves. He doesn't even know anybody else is on the road. Stop making internal accounts. Stop considering internally. That's what we're doing when we're resentful. We're making internal accounts. We're considering internally. That's what resentment is all about. Stop doing those things, you'll stop being resentful. If we can observe ourselves, cease to identify with ourselves, our pictures of ourselves, our vanity, our pride, we'll be able to practice being meek. But you can't be meek and think you are so wonderful. Oh, that's the part of meek I didn't like. Yeah, that, I don't think I'm so wonderful. I, I don't really think I deserve anything. I just think I'm nothing. My shoulders are rounded, my head is down, my knees are bent, and I'm a worm of the dust. I'm nobody, I don't count for anything. No, that's not meek. That's something else. We call that self-pity, but it's not meek. Oh, poor me, that's not meek. Meek is not resentful. Meek is alive and thrilled to be alive, powerful, strong, but not resentful. Meek knows what it wants, but it's not resentful if it doesn't get it. It's not resentful when somebody gets in the way. And somebody and something will always get in the way because that's what this life is about. Obstacles. Your best friend is going to sooner or later be your biggest obstacle because that's how it works. Now. You can say, well, it shouldn't be that way, blah, 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 and get all resentful. Or you can say, yeah, that's how it works, far out. <laughs> okay, that's how it works. The choice is yours, if you're awake enough to make the choice. If you're not, well, then there's no choice. There's nothing to talk about. You just go on the same track you were on. I know where you'll be Thursday at noon, and I know what you'll be eating, and I know where you'll be sitting, and I know who your waitress is, and blah, 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 blah. Not be resentful when people don't behave toward us as we think they should. Not make so many internal accounts against others. Maybe, perhaps, someday, reach forgiveness. The ability to cancel completely. That's what forgiveness is, is the ability to cancel completely. The debt is totally, completely, absolutely canceled. You owe me nothing. Well, that's on a wire there, somewhere up there. <laughs> we, we could get to that, but right now, we just need to focus on the next rung of the ladder. So that's up the ladder a little bit. You know, cancel completely forgiveness, that's up the ladder a little bit. If you've got any idea of who you actually are and what you actually do in life, then you know that that's up the ladder some. That's rungs above you. If you don't know, well, then, of course, you're already on that rung. You already cancel completely. And what are you doing here? The kingdom of heaven. Sermon on the Mount talks about the kingdom of heaven. The Gospels talk about the kingdom of heaven. But the work doesn't talk about the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Why does the work not talk about the kingdom of heaven? Because the work calls the kingdom of heaven something else. What does the work call the kingdom of heaven? The conscious circle of humanity. The kingdom of heaven is the conscious circle of humanity. That is where people with higher level of being hang out. Whoa, wait a second now. This is starting to make a little sense here. People with a higher level of being all hang out together in the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven is within you. So all these people are hanging out within me. What are you trying to tell me? Well, I'm trying to tell you that the door to the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's an internal thing. That when you stop identifying with the external self that life has built, the false personality, then you have some attention to give to who you actually are, the essential you. Then you open an inner door by observing yourself in an inner way. You open a door to a huge, vast kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, where the conscious circle of humanity resides. People at a much higher level of being than our current level. And it's no good thinking about matters that are very remote from us. Well, the kingdom of heaven, and I want to be like Jesus, and I want to be like Buddha, and I want to be like uh, you know, all the masters, and I want to be this. And That's great. But it doesn't do us any good to think like that, because then imagination takes over, and the next thing you know, we are like that. And have we changed? No. We haven't changed at all. We just go around acting 
Not being, but acting like them, dressing like them, putting on faces like we think their face would be, putting on airs like we think they would behave. It's like pretending to be a ballerina, pretending to be a pilot, an airplane pilot, wearing the hat, you know, and the wings and the suit and walking around with the, with the little case, you know, that follows you around with a handle on it and follows you everywhere you go. One of those little cases, the overnight cases that the pilots had. They get off the plane and they always drag these little things with them. You know, it's like just going around, hanging around airports and doing that. Primping for people. People, oh, you must be a pilot. <laughs> yes, I am, actually. <laughs> oh, you must fly. Do you fly the big ones? Oh, yes, I fly the biggest ones. Yes, I... I've been all over the world. Yeah, that's great. See what I mean? It's like we spend our time pretending to be something that we're not. Or we could spend our time changing our level of being. Oh, that's hard work. It's much easier to pretend. It's much easier to buy the tutu and the toe shoes and to go dancing around like that. To have a couple of ballet moves or what we think are ballet moves. Than it is to actually be a ballerina or to be a pilot or to be whatever it is that we're pretending to be. You see, the thing is, is that your next level of being is nearer than breathing. It's closer than hands and feet. Your next level of being is just above you. But unfortunately, we're looking down the line. We're so busy running down the track, we don't take any time to look up and see that just above us is our next level of being, within reach. Each of us can become a little more conscious than we are. We can live a little more consciously than we do. We can feel the force of this work entering our ordinary affairs of the day. Here's the problem. You think I'm asking you to be different. You think I'm asking you to change your level of being. You think I'm asking you to do all these tasks. You think I'm asking you to be this different person. No, I'm not. I am offering you little steps that you can take that will change your way of seeing yourself and everything in this world, little by little. Changes so small, so minute, that you hardly even recognize them, but that alter your entire universe. Not big things. I'm not promising you in 90 days this can happen, in six days and seven steps and blah, blah, blah. I'm not promising you any of that. As far as I'm concerned, it's all bunk. It's all sales. I'm saying that if you'll do the things that this work asks you to do, you will change. If you don't do them, if you just pretend to do them, you will not change. Most people will not change. Do the math. Figure out what that means. You can do this work. You can't do in life, but you can do this work. Well, what, can, what do you mean I can't do in life? I do things in life all the time. I can't do the work. No, it's just the opposite. You really can't do in life. You just think you're doing when actually life is doing you. You're just a cog in the machine. Well, we don't like to think of ourselves that way because we're much more proud of ourselves than that. We're much more arrogant and vain than that. A little cog in a big machine? I'm just his part? Yeah, that's all. Oh, you're, you must be mistaken. <laughs> I can prove you're mistaken. Yes, I'm sure you can. And I know where you'll be on Thursday at noon. Gurdjieff said... We must remember that we can do this work. I love Gurdjieff because he was so simple with it. What is it like to be awake? Everything's more real, more vibrant. All the same. It's just the same as it is now, except everything's more real, more vibrant, more alive. And that's the way it is. If you've had moments of being more awake, that's exactly the way it is. Everything's the same. They're still the same people. They still have the same big nose or little nose. They still have the same bald head or hairy head. You know, they're still the same. But everything's more vibrant, more alive and you're not identified with it in the same way. Say it with me. I can do this work. Say it with me. I can do this work. I can do this work. One more time. I can do this work. I know this is exactly what they do in the seminars. Say it with me now. I can do this work. Yeah, I know that. But the problem is, is that this actually can work for you. You can actually start to gain some force by saying, you know, I can do this work. I can do this work. I can work. I can work now. I do this. The reason I'm telling you this is because I do this. I'll be in it. You know where in it is? I'll be in it and I go, wait a second, I can work. I can work right here in it. But it's a cesspool. It stinks. It's horrible. It's ucky. Yes, but I can work. And hands are washable. That's one of my favorites. I got it from Jess. Jess's grandmother. Isn't it your grandmother? Jess's grandmother used to say, hands are washable. You have to know in life hands are washable. If you don't know hands are washable, you're stuck. You're stuck like this. Oh, 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 don't touch it.
Oh, there's a bug over there. I can't reach it. Remember Joshua? Joshua was a little boy. Josh, look, get that bug. I can't reach it. It was like two inches away from him. I can't reach it, meaning I don't want to touch it. And that's what we are like in life. We don't want to touch it, so we send the machine out to touch everything. And we wonder why we have no life. We wonder why all we have is this cyclical train track going around and around and around, stopping at the same place at the same time. You could set your watch by this train. And we do. I can remember myself according to my own level. You may not remember yourself according to my level. So, remember yourself according to your own level. I can separate. I cannot identify according to my own level. I cannot identify like Jesus Christ. No, I can't do that. But I can do it like me. I can do it at my level. Stop comparing yourself with people far beyond you. Now, it's okay to have them as guideposts. But don't think that you're going to do that today. Just do what you can do today. Don't get too remote. Just take the next rung on the ladder. You see, level of being is discontinuous. It doesn't continue. It's not linear. It's not like the, the, the part of the ladder that goes up, the parallel part that hold the rungs. No, it's not like that. It's not a continuous line like that. It's rungs. You've got to go, you've got to make a jump to the next level of being. It's like those telephone wires. You've got to make a jump to the next highest wire. You don't just keep traveling on the one you're on and then you get there. No, you've got to get off the one you're on and on to the next one. Oh, I don't know if I like that. You know, I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. Well, the next level of being, they're not afraid of heights, so don't worry about it. Once you're there, it'll be fine. There's nothing like this. All the things that are binding you now, all the things that you're afraid of now, you don't have to be afraid of on the next level of being. You have other things to be afraid of. You have other things to bind. You have other things to worry about. But still, it won't be the same as this level of being. So make the leap. Take the next rung above you. Even if you can only do this, stop your fantasy, stop your justifying, stop your negative emotions, stop making internal accounts, practice not identifying. Even if you can only do that for a short time, let's say you can only do that for like two minutes a day. Okay, let's say you can only do it for 30 seconds a day. Let's say you're a real slug. You can only do it for 30 seconds a week. Then do it. Oh, but it won't do any good. Oh, it's just forget it. I just can't do it. And this is where you live. I look at you. I watch you. This is where you live. You live here. Oh, it doesn't do any good. What's the, what's the use of, of not eating? What's the use of going on a diet? I never lose weight. Well, you'll never lose weight that way, I'll tell you. Well, what's the use? I may as well just have what I want because it's just impossible to... I guarantee you, you'll never lose weight that way. I promise you. But little by little, you can do it. It takes a long time. Oh, boo-hoo. Poor you. It takes a long time. How long have you got? How long have you been here? Well, I've been here 60 years. How long have you been here? Well, I've been here 44 years. Well, I've been here 56 years. Well, I've been here... Oh, that great. And what have you done? I've wasted it. Well, you know, we should have an applause sign, you know, applause. <sighs> yeah, wasted it. Because that's what we've done. And what are we going to do? We're going to use our stupidity from the past to guarantee that we'll be stupid in the future and stay the same. Wow, that's really smart. People, just do what you can do. Just a little bit. If all you can do is two seconds a week, do two seconds a week. Who knows? Maybe next month you'll be able to do three seconds a week. It doesn't matter. Anything is better than nothing. Even if it's only for a short time, you're working. If you do it, you'll change your level of being. Upwards, not downwards. Inwards, not outwards. You will change your level of being if you do this work. If you practice these things, you will change your level of being. It's inevitable. It's absolutely guaranteed if you will do the work. If you will stop justifying yourself. If you will stop identifying with yourself, if you will stop practicing and wallowing in negative emotions, rolling in negative emotions all the time, if you will stop doing those things, even if it's just for a little while, you will change your level of being. You will start to attract a new, different life, different situations, different kinds of people, different everything. You can't practice this work unless you feel it's good. You have to feel it's good. There is, this work is good. You have to feel its goodness. You have to feel it. You have to feel it on an emotional level. You have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is good. This is the greatest thing I've ever found in my life. I'm really excited about this. If I was in a field and I dug this work up, I would go and sell everything that I have to buy the field 
so that I would own what I just dug up. That is the pearl of great price. That is the treasure hidden in the field. That is what this work is. It is good. It feels good because it is good. You've got to value it for the goodness that it is. When you do, things change. You begin to value it as one of the most important things that you've met in life. The people in my life who I met who did this work were the most important people in my life. There's no question about it. I value them above all others. Take the jump. Leave behind the old habits, thoughts, feelings, behaviors. Move on to something new, better, higher, richer. It's worth it. And all you have to do is remember, I can work right now. It may not be much, but I can do something. I can identify less. I can be less negative. I can stop justifying myself just for a minute. I can separate myself just a little bit more and see that that is not I and that I have a right not to be negative. This will lead you to a higher level of being. You want to change your level of being? You want a different life? You want to be a different person? That's how you do it.